Okay, um, we're now on the corner of Jefferson, as you can see, well maybe you can't see it. Jefferson and uh, 11th Avenue, I believe, yes. We're in front of the, uh, the Black Lives Matter mural. Across, and this mural here is the Black Panther mural. So you've got two murals. You've got the, the Black Panther mural right here, Jefferson and 11th Avenue. And you've also got across the street from that, you've got the Black Lives Matter mural. I'm Earl O'Farrell Hutchinson. We just had a press conference giving our reaction to uh, the major media regarding uh, Derek Chauvin. The sentencing today, as you may or may not know, he got 22.5 years. So we'll see where that goes at this point in time. We voiced con some concerns, both good and bad, uh, about the sentencing and some of the things that um, we felt could and should and still need to be done. Um, with me is my co-partner, not in crime, but in justice, always, always on the, on the case, working for things, working in the community for justice, work, working all the time to make sure that essentially justice is served. They move, angle the camera around a little bit. Reverend Pastor Jonathan Mosley, National Action Network, Western Regional Director. Jonathan, what did you tell the press today? Uh, today we uh, had a chance to speak to the press, our concerns of the sentencing of uh, Derek Chauvin getting 22 and a half uh, years. thought that it should have been more uh, extensive. I was looking no less than 25, uh, but because of circumstances in which they wiggled around it, uh, they gave him that sentence. Uh, so we're thankful for what we did get. You know, hopefully it sends a message to law enforcement that they are not above the law and that they will have to be held accountable. Well, the other thing, too, the family of George Floyd, um, I never got the sense there was any remor real remorse, sincere remorse on the part of Derek Chauvin or any of his entourage toward the Floyd family. Did you get that same sense? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get any sense of sincerity. Uh, again, especially with his um, mother getting up there today, she hadn't made a statement during the whole process of uh, trial, but she got up today and then she tried to make this last. Uh, pitch appeal that how good our son is and what a wonderful person he is and it, it's you know it's really rather hypocritical <laughs> if he was that good of a person he within that eight to nine minutes he would have been able to come to his good senses and get his knee off of the, uh, Mr. Floyd's neck. You know one other thing too this question was asked us at the press conference about his mother that statement how good a person he was what and you address that but one other thing could have been added Derek Chauvin let me say what many people forget Derek Chauvin had 13 or 14 other offenses against him before George Floyd he was sued many times he was brought up on charges many times same thing victimizing folk. people seem to forget that this wasn't an isolated case you know one guy that just lost it one time you had over a, a dozen cases against him filed yeah. and he's still a cop yeah yeah I, I found that to be extremely unique that with all the other prior cases of the things that he has been involved in of similar uh, circumstances that they seem to omit that that this guy was like they try to make him as a model citizen especially I think the last statement from his uh, uh, defense when he made a statement about some of his fellow officers that you know he would come in and volunteer when uh, on his day off and uh, he was such a great uh, partner and he was a great fellow officer well what does that say about them? Uh, they just like him? That it says we got a gung-ho cop we, here. There you go. <laughs> you know, we got you a know. Marine type he, guy here. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the statements made, uh, uh, if he was asked to dig ditches for eight hours, he would do it on his off day. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, that's kind of saying that this man doesn't have much of a life because with all the pressure and everything that goes on in law enforcement, you welcome an off day. Well, I think, you know, the main thing is, I think we got the point across that two things. One, there was some progress, the fact that he was sentenced. 
Um, can't deny that. But the second thing that I think is important, the second thing I think that is important is it's not enough. It's not enough. And I guess we can add a third thing, too. Do, did police officers of America, did they get the message? If you violate your badge and the gun and your uniform and your authority, you are going to face the same kind of consequence. Are you convinced, um, Will, that that message really came through? I, I can tell you, I'm not. I don't, I don't think so. I think that it was, they were holding their breath and uh, hoping that that kind of sentence that he received would be just that uh, and nothing more stringent and nothing more stiff. So they kind of have a exhale about them now. They're like, Phew. You know, but I mean, in the, in the same light, you know, those rogue officers still exist. They're in every city, every county, every state. And uh, had there been a How about real, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department? Uh, well, Hello. They, they still have problems and need uh, uh, to be looked at clearly from the, t from the top down. You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, cops of America said it was a bad apple, bad cop roll cop, but that's not us. Yeah. So they can take heart and say, you know what, that was him. We're not like that. Of course, they always do. I mean, yeah. situations like that, it's a, that's not me time. Not cop, me. You know. Uh, Don't point the finger yeah. at me. No, I'm a model guy. Yeah. You know, no. A so, woman. Yeah. So, I mean, again, having more than 12 offenses of the same type and still a that's law a, officer. That's a hell of a model. Yeah. It. it it says a lot about not only him, but those that he works with. Well, and never forget, too, we still have not passed the George Floyd police reform bill. Right. And at this point in time, we don't know if we will pass it or not, if the, uh, the GOP has anything to do with it, which is the ultimate insult to me, to George Floyd, the ultimate desecration of his memory and everything that came out of what happened to him. Any final thought, uh, Rev? Well, I, I agree with you, Earl. It, it, uh, until we can pass that George Floyd bill. I don't know what we're going to have to do to put pressure. We got to march. We go, have to go and look at some of those uh, elected officials and, and, and do more to uh, push them. Uh, but something's got to be done in order for law enforcement to take heed that you can't keep getting away with killing our people. Thank you, Reverend Jonathan Mosley. Jonathan Mosley, the National Action Network, we're in right in Los Angeles, Western Regional Director. I'm Earl Ofari Hutchinson, President of the Los Angeles Urban Policy Roundtable. One more quick pan here. It's a Black, uh, Black Panther mural, which is on Jefferson and 11th Avenue. If you get a chance, you're driving by, take a look at it. Also, right across the street, too, you have the Black Lives Matter mural which is a little bit closer to 10th Avenue on Jefferson, LA 90016. Thanks again for joining us today. And by the way, share this with others too. Keep the dialogue going, keep the conversation going. God knows in these troubled times, we need it. Thanks again for tuning in.